paw. Other paw. Good girl. What are we doing today, girls? Of course, sob stuff, duh. What we have here is a battery and of course a box of mysterious parts. I placed an order to GenuineSobParts.com and a small order to eSobParts.com. Huge shout out to them with the chaos around Christmas time. They still got me my parts pretty quickly. It's just I've actually kind of been lazy. I had a lot going on and I haven't had time to install it. I have a brand new battery here for my Red Arrow. Unfortunately, it's at the age or the time to where the car sits for a little while. If I don't start it, the battery just dies. So I picked this up at my local auto parts store. We'll be installing this today. Along with that, let me show you this order that I got from GenuineSob.com. Again, a shout out to them. It's not sponsored by any way, shape, or form. However, they're awesome when it comes to reasonably priced parts. First thing being, and one actually from eSobParts.com that I just kind of threw in here. It's these little guys which go with the battery install and I always wondered why every single 9.3 that I've owned or that I've ever worked on never has these plastic push clips that go into here and now I think I know why so this is the battery cover that sits on here so a lot of sobs this is actually missing because it does in fact get brittle with age and the heat inside the engine bay this one's actually not in terrible shape the one on the red car is actually still on it. it's in great shape however both of those cars are missing these clips and like I said every other 9.3 that I've ever worked on is missing the clips as well they look like they screw in however it almost looks like they just kind of push in I want to mess around with this a little bit off camera make sure I know what I'm doing so I don't just break these clips because these are not the cheapest thing it just my OCD is killing me in the fact that I have these trim panels yet these pins are missing back to the goodness in this box and this is something that I thought was actually pretty interesting that I didn't even know was still available Wow, these are actually kind of heavy these are some genuine sob floor mats might be hard to see but actually it says sob right here Nice rubber floor mat, very durable. My red sob has them in it. They're kind of showing their age. I'll transfer those over and put them in the blue car. So these are pretty cool. They have the little ends that go into the factory carpet retainer. So that holds them in place. I think at this point in time, they're only offered in black. And they even come with the rear mats. Next up on the list is some stuff for the manual transmission cars. Now both my 9.3s are the six speed manuals. However, I'm only going to be upgrading the parts in the red car today. And what I have here is going to be a shifter clamp reinforcement. I'll show you how to install this. It's actually very simple in the battery install goes hand in hand with it because since I'm replacing the battery I might as well pull out the battery tray to get access to the shifter cable which I then therefore am able to put this on top of the original clamp. I don't have a ton of play in my shifter but enough to be a nuisance. Along with that going inside the car I have some shifter base bushings. I'm doing away with the original bushings and going with these metal versions but i'm really hoping that all of this stuff will kind of reduce or eliminate any play within my shifter and lastly is this billet engine oil cap which is absolutely amazing supposedly according to genuine sob is a limited run version and, and you may have never seen this before specifically because a lot of these engine oil caps come engraved with the sob griffin logo which don't get me wrong that looks absolutely amazing these engine caps now are being machined a little bit smaller than the bulky original units so going to a quick backstory about this ghost well, a lot of people in this day and age think this relates to the Koenigsegg hypercar company in which in part it does. However, this little ghost predates the Koenigsegg hypercar company and it goes back to the day and age of when Saab was producing and flying their jets, specifically the F-10 Engelholm, Sweden location in the Saab AJS-37 Viggen aircraft. Have this on the side along with the text, the show must go on. As far as the research that I quickly did before I even purchased this cap, because I wanted to know a little bit more about it and now I feel the need to kind of share it and, and supposedly 
the little emblem of the ghost came from the fact that the residents around that base couldn't see the jets however they heard it kind of like a ghost you may not see the spooky things that are going on but you certainly hear it so i thought that was pretty cool at some point those jets adopted this logo and then eventually many years later long story short konase factory burnt down they were looking for a new location picked up the Ingelholm sweden hangar at least one of them because i think there's actually a museum there as well so they picked up one of those hangars and then they started production there so whenever they moved in there this ghost emblem was on the inside of it christian von koniseg now adds it to all of his cars at least the ones produced in engenholm sweden so very cool little random backstory and something that i think pays respects to the original Saab fighter jets not necessarily koniseg but something that i think is very unique and i'll uh, quit rambling here let me grab all these parts up and uh we'll go ahead and install this stuff This simply just lifts up. You don't have these retainers. Set that to the side. We got two 10 millimeter bolts. There's a 13 millimeter nut down here that we'll need to remove to loosen up this battery. If you have the air duct, it simply lifts up and out. We'll go ahead and set that to the side. And now we'll go ahead and remove these two battery terminals. We're not gonna remove this one completely just loosen it enough that way we can wiggle this battery up and out of here conveniently enough there is a lever on this battery now with that battery removed that locates these three t40 torque screws not 100 required but i will be using my impact gun Three T40 screws are now removed. Kind of where things get a little bit weird with this battery tray. So you want to lift up on this guy right there. It does loosen up these relay boxes. This you should be able to kind of maneuver out. So now we need to release this tab up here. But before we do that, let me remove, let me get this battery cable out of the way. We're going to take off the lid to this relay box. And there is just these two tabs that you push inwards and then it will come up and release so pretty much you just hold in the tab and lift up it's in a couple channels now with that up this guy come out like that and then there is this is the uh, hood open switch i don't know the official name for it but there's normally a tab here mine is unfortunately broke off but we need to remove this pigtail so that just lowers down like such and by this hood switch don't forget to cut the zip tie and be ever so delicate to cut just the zip tie and not the wire otherwise you will most certainly wreck your day the most annoying part of the process, I think, is this plastic electrical harness and whatever you want to call this. So I don't really have a great way of doing this, but usually what I do is I get my fingers in behind underneath here. I get my thumb and I plant it right here. And then pretty much I just lift up with my fingers and then my thumb is just holding things steady. And then that lifts up like that. I don't believe there's a tab. Okay, disregard. Apparently I broke a tab off there. Uh, the front... I know 100% there is a tab right in there, way down there. And this is the one I'm usually pretty careful with. And I just kind of push up on the tab and then this lifts up. Fortunately, apparently I broke off right here maybe. Looks like it wasn't even the tab, but one of these channels. So just be extra cautious. Now, whenever this goes back in, there's plenty left for this thing to go back in its place. So uh, not too worried about that. Uh, just a word of caution. Don't do what I just did and break that. So now we're able to ever so gracefully lift and wiggle this plastic battery tray out, set it to the side. And voila, here we are. We're left with the two shifter cables right here. And the one we will be focusing on 
this guy right here. So this is gonna be the before, just kinda gauge how much play is in here. So I'm gonna run it through the gears and we'll see how much play this actually has. To get the shifter cable off, ideally you'd want to use like a trim removal tool. I only have these plastic ones and they're just going to be too flimsy to remove this. So uh, if you do have a trim removal tool, I recommend a metal one. Otherwise you can do it with some screwdrivers. However, just be careful. And then one thing you want to be careful of is I think this is like a breather hose of some sort. It seems rather brittle, not so much the hose with the connector going into the transmission. So just be careful not to hit that, mangle it and break it. The beauty of this kit, and it's like a reinforcement kit of some sort, but I'm basically going to call it like a splint, uses these two T25 Torx screws, and then there's two pieces to it. You have one with a smaller opening, one with a larger opening. The larger opening goes on the very bottom, and then the top opening with the smaller portion does have writing. Rectangular notch will go facing towards the rear, or I should say the firewall. Push that on there as best as possible. And then top portion right here, the smaller opening is the upper one. And then again, the rectangular opening goes towards the firewall. And we have the two T25 screws we'll start. Now for me, I'm actually gonna be using a little bit of Loctite. It's medium strength, blue stuff removable, part number 24005. Go ahead and put it on both the bolts and then start them. And then before you get too far, I'm going to push that back into place. All right, tighten these down to good and tight. So nothing super extremely tight to where you're going to snap the bolts, but just enough to where you get some resistance, add a little bit more to it, and then that is good to go. So already I can tell that's a lot more sturdy. We'll go ahead, run through the gears and see if we eliminated the play in this cable. Shifter definitely feels a heck of a lot more secure. Pretty crazy, something so simple makes such a difference. Time for the battery tray. And this is kind of an awkward balance of getting the wires out of the way and getting this to fall into place. And if you're wondering as far as an in-depth video about doing this, well, I actually installed and upgraded an 18G Turbo not too long ago, and I really go a little bit more in depth with this. So if this is not to your liking for this install and reassembly of this battery tray, check out that link in the description. Battery's ready to go in, positive side. Obviously it goes to the red positive cable closest to the firewall. Uh, one thing that might not be apparent is the fact that the battery, if you have the appropriate group size battery, which is each six group size, has these little uh, feet to it on each side. This has to go underneath here and same thing for the front side. Now mine, I do still have the hold down in the front. It's just rather loose. So we're going to go ahead, drop the battery in place, shimmy it forward. It should drop down more and then push it back. We'll find the happy middle ground and then tighten the 13 millimeter hold down. The battery has this cover, go ahead, take that off. One thing that I like to do is use a little battery cleaner right here. Kind of scuffs up the terminals a little bit. Make sure it has a good connection. And we'll just finish tightening this 10 millimeter top terminal for the battery. We just gotta put in this original plastic, little duct here, very simple. Make sure that's good and clean. Set this trim panel on here. Go ahead and re-plug in this pigtail for the hood open sensor. Got a new zip tie.
Now I got these clips that finally my OCD should be happy. Since I'm doing this on both cars, it might make a little more sense to show you it on this. So this is kind of how they come, real spaced out. Best way to go about doing this is actually just go ahead and first push it in to the rectangular slot like such, and then just go ahead, push it in all the way. So that's how it should be secured when it's in the car locked down. So then just go ahead, rotate it 90 degrees, and there you go. So it's nice because they actually stay in this cover, but you just need to make sure whenever you set it down in here, you line these properly to what's in the core support there. And then once it's pushed down, it should kind of click a little bit. And then all you do is turn it 90 degrees and then push in and it spreads these little feet out and locks it in place. So 90 degrees, see how that's lined up? Push it in, that's all it takes. Now for what I'm gonna call the PS de resistance is this oil cap. Go ahead, pop off this big bulky original one. I'll show you a quick comparison of the factory Big Bird yellow one versus the new Ghost billet versions. Much smaller. So kind of, I mean, I will admit, kind of sticks out a little bit compared to everything else in the car, even though there's been a bunch upgraded. It does kind of look a little bit stealthy. This kind of sticks out a little bit, but uh, it does kind of tell a story, which I think is pretty amazing. So I may try to find somebody local that can anodize this black. Maybe they can do something with the ghost, kind of make it pop a little bit more so everything is not black, but we'll see. Comment down below what you think I should do with this cool new billet oil cap. Now it's time to install these shifter base bushings underneath the shifter assembly. And before we begin, I must say that Genuine Saab and Saab companies, some of the aftermarket Saab companies just in general have some of the best directions I've ever seen. So Genuine Saab, DO88, companies like that, they not only provide you with good descriptive instructions, but also color pictures, which speaks volume. So kudos to them. It's actually not that difficult of an install. So we don't need that where we're going, but pretty much we'll go ahead and begin by removing this shifter surround. And it's pretty simple. And if you want a detailed install video, check the link in the description. I did this previously. We have to loosen up the two T25 torque screws on each side of this console. I got a quarter inch drive with the T25 Torx bit on the end. And we'll go ahead and loosen both sides up. So now this panel is somewhat loosened up. So you can kind of lower it a little bit. It will kind of release it from this uh, holding spot. And now, get this tab out, just push down, push back. This panel releases. On this passenger side, we need to remove this bracket. We got four 13 millimeter bolts. Bracket comes out. So there's a split right here. And there's no bolts that hold it in place, but pretty much we just need to split these two ends part and there we go so i mean pretty much you're just wiggling stuff and it's pretty apparent how this stuff goes this goes all the way up into here this end goes inside of that and all this does simply is give you better access to these base bushings got 10 millimeter Now for this back bolt underneath this HVAC duct that we kept in here. Well, the trick to removing this is a maneuvering ratcheting wrench. Also in the 10 mil, just get your flathead screwdriver underneath and you can pry it up. This is pretty much how it goes in there. 
this is underneath and the, then you have this like center sleeve here and then I was able to get the screwdriver in here and pry this out and then once the center piece is out well then you can pretty much manipulate this rubber piece and pop it out. So here we have the old versus the new. Pretty crude, but something like that versus now the shifter will sit on this little guy right here. And then this will go up on the top. Pretty simple design, but very effective. We'll toss one washer right there. We have another washer we'll toss up top there. Now we'll go ahead and start the bolts by hand. Turns out we can actually get the ratchet in here, no problem. Now for reassembly this duct right here will go all the way up and it will go over top of this white duct right here. Now we need to reattach this bracket. Very simple. Slide it in like such. Go ahead and start all of these bolts by hand first. Now for one of the more tricky parts of the install or reinstallation is the fact that you gotta put this trim piece back. So probably the best thing to start with is this front tab right here. Now this tab goes into this metal bracket in behind here. You have some other tabs. You have these two right here. This one will go like right here and then this back portion will go over top the other one but needs to definitely go in behind here. Get your T25 Torx screw and we'll start to thread it in place. Double check everything looks good. Yep, it does. Everything back here. Yep, that also looks good. Gaps up here look pretty good. And now we just need to tighten this down. And while I do this, I'm actually going to keep some upward pressure underneath just to make sure all the important gaps up top here still look good. Same process on the driver's side. T25 Torx already removed. Again, remove the four 13 millimeter bolts holding this bracket in. Here's where things get a little bit tricky and kind of the reasoning behind why we loosen this top panel up. But there is a bolt, well, you can kind of see it right there, and that is the fourth and final 10 millimeter bolt. So you can possibly get at it with an extension and a swivel. But what I'm actually going to be doing is simply throw the car in reverse. That throws this cable back and that gives you a little more access to that 10 millimeter bolt. I have currently a three inch extension with the, with the 10 millimeter socket. We'll kind of just fish it into here. <laughs> Tricky.
about sound deadening foam piece. shifts feel so crisp now i cannot wait to drive this now i will defer to my friends in the comment section one thing i'm not 100 percent sure about is if there's any resolution for the side to side play so right now it's actually in gear but yet there's still some play to it so that may just be a product of being a stick shift vehicle my other 9.3 has probably the same if not worse play to it um, but definitely what we installed today takes care of the forward and reverse play but unfortunately, there's still some side-to-side -side stuff. So I don't know if that's normal. Let me know down below. But if there's something to resolve the side-to-side -to, -side to make it, I guess, 100% perfect, I don't know if that's even possible, let me know in the comment section below. But for now, so much better. So we'll go ahead and get this crap out of here. So uh, these floor mats, kind of a bust. So I got this one in. was quite the struggle. This one... No matter how much I try, cannot get it in. And here I can tell somebody's definitely struggled with floor mats before because it looks like they've actually drilled some little holes in the pegs, probably to fasten the floor mats to some degree. But looking at these other ones, and I haven't checked part numbers, I think they're on the back side of it, but I imagine this floor mat right here is literally the same with the exception of these, I presume, original ones have these like plastic guys that clip onto the plastic tabs here where these new ones are just kind of molded rubber one piece into these floor mats. Progress has been made with the floor mats. So I attempted to install those same floor mats that didn't successfully install in the red car into the blue car. That didn't work because you can replace just these pins. Uh, you kind of have to take all this out and go from underneath, and then it's like a two-piece thing. So you can replace these without redoing the entire carpet. Uh, however, didn't work for the blue car, so then I started poking around a little bit more. This is what's in the blue car now, some just carpet mats. And you can actually take a screwdriver and pry these apart. And this is a two-piece, and this is what clips onto that locating tab in the floor. So this is what it looks like separated. This is the top piece. This is the bottom piece and then it will sandwich the carpet. But in this case, I'm actually going to, there's like a relief here, so I'm gonna take a knife, cut that out, and then this will drop in like that. And then on the bottom side, because that hole's not big enough, once we cut this open more, this will go all the way through. We'll have this at the bottom, squeeze them together, hopefully that locks, and then it should work. we need a bigger hole that didn't fit so now I got to step it up and I have a one inch bit and the key to doing this is run the bit in reverse otherwise you can just really tear up this rubber that's in so it looks like this guy is kind of in the way a little bit so I think I'm gonna trim that but otherwise everything looks really good right. finally after even more struggling I got these things in so you can see my dirty footprints I was planting my feet on here moving about making sure these things are nice and locked in one thing that's extremely annoying is if you center these 
then there's actually a gap underneath here. So I went back and offset this one. My OCD is kind of killing me that it's not centered like this one, but they're actually locked in and it's pretty darn sturdy. So that's not going anywhere. Most people aren't even gonna notice the fact that one is offset compared to the other, but the new floor mat is now in. Here's a good example of what I'm talking about. This one I modified, that's nice, locked into place. Now if you were to lay this one flat, you can see this peg doesn't line up properly, so that's why on the passenger side I had to offset it. So otherwise, if you just line that up like it should be, then you're left with this annoying gap here. And maybe over time this kind of falls down, I have no idea. Maybe I'm just making more of a big deal out of this thing than it needs to be, but I am going to offset this one and then call this project done. That is going to be a wrap on today's video of the random installation of all these various parts on my new Gen 9.3. Now, I appreciate you making it this far in the video, and I won't take up too much more of your time, I promise. I just had a couple points to make before we depart. The first one being, if you have a 5 or 6-speed manual transmission new Gen 9.3, I highly suggest getting the base shifter kit along with that kind of cable clamp splint from Genuine Saab, no, this is not a sponsored video. In my personal opinion, I think it's stiffened up these shifts tremendously. Now, the side-to-side -side play, there's definitely more room to be desired with that, but I'm gonna do a little more research to see if there is a remedy to that. Now, secondly, the floor mats, I wouldn't necessarily suggest purchasing those. Now, you did see my struggles. It's very frustrating knowing that something as simple as a floor mat can't just clip super easily into the two little pegs of the carpet. You have to sit there and modify it. Now, it's nice knowing that there's still a thick rubber floor mat available for sale to this day. However, I don't think I would recommend it just because it is a little more involving than a floor mat installation should go. But with that being said, I appreciate you watching and making it this far. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop a comment down below. I would love to hear from you and definitely consider subscribing. I have a ton of how-to stuff out there. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous and there's definitely more to come. So I'm not done with the sob how-to stuff just yet. With that being said, I appreciate you watching and I'll catch your friends next time.